In this video, I'm going to show you real results coming from neural networks predictions that you can apply on stock market, forex, or even cryptocurrency data. If you are into cutting edge algorithmic trading, you probably came across prediction algorithms using recurrent neural networks, time series predictions, and the so-called long short-term memory networks. If you are new to this channel, as usual, the Python code is available for download from the link in the description in case you are interested in the coding part and you want to have something to start with and apply your own parameters on top of what will be presented here. On the right, I'm showing the predictions results we already obtained last time. So this video is a continuation of the previously published one. I would strongly suggest you watch that video first. I will leave a link in the description as well. These are the results the algorithm predicted last time compared with real market data, and it looks amazing as a first trial. The green and black lines are so close to each other's on the right figure and on the left is what we will obtain today. These results don't look as appealing. They are more real reflecting true potential of our LSTM model. So we will go through the details and show the pitfalls that might be tricky to our eyes, but not much of use in real life. The way we did it last time is we fed the model with different input values, including open, close, high, and low prices. We can also include some technical indicators such as the RSI, moving averages, and so on. And we expect the model to predict the next candle's closing price. If this is the uh, daily time frame, so every candle is one day, and this is today's candle, I'm going to feed the model with uh, the data of the past. It can be 20 previous days, 20 candles, 30 candles, and so on. And the data can include the open, close, high, low prices of each candle. We can add technical indicators like the RSI, moving averages, VWAP, and so on. We can also add custom technical indicators. And the model is going to try to predict the closing price of this candle that is coming after our today's candle. So in other words, we're giving the uh, model previous data, past data, and we're going to ask the model to predict tomorrow's closing price. And we can check how good is our model by testing this repetitively on different candles. So through the time, we are going to download, let's say 10 years worth of data and test the model on 20% of that part because we're keeping 80% for training the model. So the model would learn how to trade and how to predict future values. Okay, let's jump into the Python code and check what's going on under the hood and why the results are looking so appealing when they are not useful for real life trading. So this is the Jupyter Notebook file since it was detailed and explained in the last video, I'm not going through the details here. I'm just showing you briefly what we have done. We are loading the data. We have the data here. Then I'm adding my technical indicators to the data frame. And I'm also adding the target. And this is very crucial. I mean, the target, which is the uh, closing price of the next candle in this case. I'm also adding another column, which is called target. And this is the difference between the closing price of the current candle and the closing price of the next candle. So it is how many pips or how much the uh, price has moved up or down starting from the current closing price. We have minus 2.69 plus 6.26 plus 7 plus 4 minus 0 0.8. So remember, these are the differences between the current closing price of the current candle and tomorrow's closing price. We're going to train the model to guess by how many pips the price is going to move up or down within one day. And at this point, you might be wondering what's the difference? I mean, it must be the same thing. It must be almost the same thing trying to predict the next candles closing price or trying to predict by how many pips the price has moved within one day. And this is what makes the difference between these two results. The one on the right is predicting the closing price of the next candle and the one on the left is trying to predict the movement of the price between the two candles. And as we can see, the one on the right looks like it's working perfectly fine. We have the perfect model, but the one on the left is showing more uh, difficulties to converge with real data. And we're going to explain why. I'm going to show you how most of the programs using LSTM that you are going to find for free on the web are tricking the readers by showing the right results. So at this point, we have this data frame. Then we are scaling our data at this point using the min-max scaler of the uh, scikit-learn package. And we are feeding 30 back candles, 30 candles for the model before the current candle to learn 
about the future and to try to predict what would be the uh, tomorrow's closing price or the price movement between today's candle and tomorrow's candle. Then I'm splitting the data 80% for training or for learning and then 20% to check if the model has learned sufficiently enough to predict values with a good accuracy. Then we're training the model at this point, we're fitting the model. So I didn't optimize all the parameters, but this is not the point of our video today. And the difference here is that we're going to try to predict this column, the column called target, instead of the target next close column. Technically, this is done at this point here, this line. So instead of passing the minus one, which is the index of the last column, I'm adding minus three instead, column minus one, the last column, minus two, and then minus three. The model will be learning on this target to predict this target column. And then when we ask the model to make predictions, it's supposed to be predicting these values. So after training the model, meaning allowing the model to learn how to predict these values on 80% of our data. I'm using the last 20% to make some predictions. I'm passing model.predict x underscore test, and I'm printing the first 10 predicted values to be compared with the um, real values uh, of y underscore test. And we can see that it's 0 0.628 here, 0 0.66, then we have 0 0.62, as well, so 0 0.65, so it's not very spectacular. And if we plot these results, this is what we get. And we can clearly see that the modal predictions in green, the line in green, doesn't predict at all the real price movements, which is in black, in the black color. And the reason we are seeing these differences between the previous results and now is that we are asking the model to show us the real predictions of what is happening in the future. And I'm going to explain this point. When we ask the model to predict the closing price of the next candle, and we provide the closing price of the current candle, the model will learn that the next closing price wouldn't be that far of the current closing price. So in other words, any predicted value that is provided by the model that is close enough to this value of today's closing price is going to look as a good value. And this is why the previous predictions are looking well, because we are providing actually the current closing prices where the price is, and we are only asking the model to predict the next closing price. In other words, the model's curve is nothing but the price curve but delayed by one candle. And this is why it looks very appealing or very converging as a good prediction values. If we take a look at these two curves, we can see that the green curve is nothing but the black curve with a certain delay. And this is very clear at the beginning, at the first part here of the curve. Somehow, somewhere we have some differences, but it is always within a delay. So in other words, you could as well use a fast moving average, you would get exactly or something very close to the uh, recurrent neural networks results in this case. And unfortunately, this is the reality, meaning trying to predict if the price is moving up or down by a certain amount doesn't work. And this is what is shown here. Okay, so now that we understood the problem and where it's coming from, we could go back to our code where there might be some modifications that can probably improve the models. So first of all, we have to know which technical indicators can be added into our data frame that would be good for the model that would give some kind of a hint. And the second part is related to the model itself, like what kind of value you would like to predict, I would go for predicting this particular column here, meaning the price movement, the future price movement, and by how much is it going up few pips, down few pips, and so on. I would also try to improve this value here. I mean, how many back candles the model needs or requires in order to make a good prediction. And this is also dependent on the model itself. And the model's hyperparameters have to be improved as well. How many layers would you take? How many nodes per layer? And so on. So as you can see, the task is a bit more complicated than what we have predicted at first. And in my opinion, this is the most challenging task for LSTM's predictions. I'm gonna stop here for this video. I hope you guys liked the information we presented. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.